these eyes because that's the last thing you're going to see on this planet. When my father was murdered, I was probably just like this. Let's fuck him up. Well, welcome back to the Quarantine Games. Another lovely Sunday morning. We may be socially distant, but through the power of make-believe, we're closer than ever, I'm pretty sure. How are you, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Good, holding it together. Ryan, any updates on Lenny? Um, well, no, I haven't oh. seen him in weeks. Pretty sure he's oh. dead. Jesus. Last we met in their ongoing search of the missing Floon Blogmar, our funny feces-covered heroes found themselves in the sewers of Waterdeep, trudging through the muck with their new compatriot, Renair Neverember. After slaying a wretched gazer and doing some ethically questionable things with his corpse, the fearsome foursome found themselves staring down the gaping maw of a subterranean Xanathar guild hideout. What terrors await within? I guess we'll basically find out now. All right, so you, you're sort of at the entrance of this uh, guild hideout. You can hang here with Renair and chat with him a bit or head on in. Uh, I'll give you guys a heads up. You haven't really explored a space like this in the past. Uh, generally, when you're doing this and there's probably people about, you'll probably want to do some, some stealth uh, checks mm. and kind of roll for stealth as you move through stuff. Yeah, I'll roll for a stealth check. Yeah, get stealthy with it. Here we go, rolling the 20. Daddy's gotta go to work. And I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> but a plus four is a... Uh -huh. That's a ten. That's a, that's a ten. You, you know, uh, ten's pretty good. It's pretty stealthy. It's not, it's not the point, loudest thing know. in the world, but... Let's see. Let's see how good it is. Um, we're gonna send you down the poop tunnel. I mean, you can continue down it if you like. Oh, are we crawling in like a like a dragon's intestines, like in Star Wars? Just in general, why don't you guys um, choose the order in which you're walking? Just because that's that'll sort of help decide who's rolling for stealth, stuff like that. I think it should be Steve. I agree. I think it should be Steve. All right, fine. I, I'll go first. If I die, keep Stephanos away from my corpse. I don't want him <laughs> to make it into like a like a lampshade in his creepy ass apartment. Don't worry, I'll honor your body. I don't want you to honor my body. <laughs> As you continue down the tunnel, uh, you arrive. The main sewer tunnel expands into a circular hub with a pair of arrow slits carved into its outer walls, directly across from each other. Two passages continue on to the north and south. A stone door is set into the back wall of a stone ledge to the west. Just sizing it up, it seems like a, uh, just a classic door. Does it appear to have any keys needed or just? It's a stone door. All right, we'll go and open this door here. How am I gonna open it? How heavy is this door? This is a classic, you just push it, just push it. All right, here's what I'm gonna do then. I'm gonna take out my bagpipes <laughs> and I'm gonna start playing them and then I'm gonna kick open the door. And uh, this way, anything that's inside will come towards us. You're gonna play the bagpipes. It's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take out my bagpipes and I'm gonna start playing them. Stephanos, why don't you pierce, why don't you pierce his bagpipes with your crossbow and save us? Okay, I, I aim my crossbow straight at the bagpipes. Uh, can I roll for this? Yeah, I roll a d20. Uh, roll a nine. <laughs> and I'm gonna roll my... You rolled a nine. Ryan, Here's... roll to roll to dodge. Ah, shit, I rolled a three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you try to roll out of the yes! way, but uh, Stefano successfully pierces your bagpipes. High five. <laughs> what the hell, man? Everyone knows you don't touch a Barb's pipes. You touch my bag again, we're gonna have some problems, Stefanos. Okay, can we put Steve to the back of the line here? There you go. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'll go to the back. As you as you push open the door, you see uh, another empty room. It's a stone room, uh, quite dingy. There appears to be garbage all over the floor, and there doesn't appear to be anyone in here. Um, if you want to proceed into the next section, you'll probably want to roll stealth once more. I got. I rolled a 19. Oh. And I have a plus one, so 20. The big gal is stealthy. You're approaching a new room. Uh, you can't see around the corner, but uh, you can enter if you like. Why well, stop now, right? All we have is trash room and poop shoot. <laughs> uh, as you round the corner, a goblin uh, is pounced and ready to attack you because he heard the bagpipes. Why don't you all roll no. for initiative? Steve! Fucking Steve! God damn it! I love you like a brother, bro, but... You're an idiot. <laughs> bro! <laughs> Listen to the kids, bro. Are we rolling for initiative right now? Yeah. I rolled a 19 plus two. 
which is a 21. 10 plus 2 is 12. The goblin is going to go first because he got the jump on you. He uh, swings his scimitar at Keza. Fuck you, Steve. What's your armor class? 16. Okay, that's uh, he swings and misses. He had the jump on you, but apparently is not a very good uh, surprise attacker. <laughs> <laughs> Next up from the rear is Steve. Oh, shit. We, we popped my bagpipe, so I can't play my bagpipes. <laughs> what if I played my little flute to distract him? Maybe get him into a little trance so I could get, uh, get close to him. I could use a, I could use my cantrip, True Strike, which would uh, allow me to uh, read into the defense of my opponent so that my next turn I could attack him with vigor. Why don't you roll for... Uh... Uh, performance. I rolled a five, and my plus five is uh, is a ten, so that's a ten for performance. So the goblin spits at you, is very displeased with your performance. You did gain <laughs> brief insight into his uh, his defenses, so you, you'll have advantage on him on your next roll. But some pretty some pretty uh, abysmal performance there. Right? Well, here's the thing: I was trying to play it badly on purpose so that I could really distract him oh, with the racket. Oh. God. And then, uh, and then I could find more insight into his defense. You'll see the master plan will all come to fruition once it comes back to mm -hmm. you old Steve. Goblin, he did get the jump on you, but he is next up. So, very displeased with your performance, he then turns his attentions to you uh, and is going to uh, aim his crossbow <laughs> at you. Bring it on, big boy. <laughs> what is your armor class? It's thirteen. The goblin uh, aims quite well. He's got a very strong crossbow. That's gonna be three damage to you. A little oh, bolt hits you right it. in the shoulder. As the bolt hits you, the goblin just goes, boo. Uh, okay, next up. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> goblin speaks English now, huh? Fucking shady goblin. Next up is uh, Stephanos. I'm going to take this loot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand it back <laughs> to Steve. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to pass. You're going to pass? Goblin seems preoccupied with Steve. I want to see a one-on-one -on -one battle. Let's do this. Come on, Steve. You wanted this. You played your bagpipes. I agree. You I got this. Another, I want another shot at this okay. goblin. <laughs> you can all choose yeah. to continue to pass if you want. Next up is uh, Keza. Uh, so my options are help and attack or just pass to or Steve. Or take a seat at the back of the room and just watch these two duke it out. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's do it, baby. Renair is next up. Uh, Renair looks around and is a bit befuddled at the uh, course of events here. He's like, do you <laughs> not want me to attack this creature? Because I could make short work of him. Uh, are you sure you don't want no, my no, help? No, 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 no. Come sit with us. Come sit with us. Oh, oh. Yeah, All grab right. yourself some popcorn, old man, because I'm about to put on a show. Uh, so Renair takes a, a lean against the wall with Keza and Stephanos. And now the goblin, who also looks a little confused, uh, starts looking around at all of you, uh, and then turns his attention squarely to Steve. Um, <laughs> Steve, you're up next. I speak goblin too, right? So I could talk to this goblin. Do you speak goblin? <laughs> I speak goblin. Oh, excellent. Yeah, you can talk to him if you all want. Right. I mean, look here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> If you could fight as good as you look, which by the looks of you ain't much, I'm about to make this a very miserable day for you. I want you to look at my face right now. Look at these eyes, because that's the last thing you're going to see on this planet. Woo! I'm take my rapier, okay. and I'm going to shove it into your heart slowly so that I could see the life leave your eyes. Why don't you roll for an attack? You roll two d20s, and then whichever result is higher is the one that you use. So that would be 16. That'd be 16. That's pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Here comes the second roll. That one not as good, that's a four. <laughs> so <laughs> four, four plus four equals eight. Let's go with the 16, how about that? You did have advantage, so are you gonna use that 16? Why don't you roll for damage? It's a 1d8 plus two. I rolled a six plus two, which is an eight. Okay. Okay, you- And now, I'm gonna take my rapier out and I'm gonna hold <laughs> I'm gonna hold this goblin by the neck and whisper in his face as I slowly plunge it into his heart and watch <laughs> all of his life flash before his beady little eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do that and you slowly <laughs> push the blade into his heart, and just barely from his goblin wit lips you hear him say, Please tell my wife. <laughs> What'd you say, your wife? 
Ah, don't worry, she'll be fine. <laughs> the, goblin is, the goblin is still and blood soaked and is no longer uh, alive. Oh, wow. Did not expect you to actually win that battle. Steph knows you want to come over here and, uh, and take this goblin's ears and make them into a funny little necklace. Let's do it. Goblin, you're stew <laughs> for dinner. All right, well, go, go on then, Stephanos. Go collect. <laughs> that, was, that was a joke. That wasn't an actual suggestion. What was this goblin story? Why was he just walking around a sewer? To... We'll never know, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could ask him that if you didn't just plunge your rapier into his heart. Well, here's the thing. He came in and attacked us, so uh, uh, it's a little weird that he's in the sewer with <laughs> When he has a wife at home. Does he have any like keys on him? Uh, you dig through his pockets and you just find a little pouch that has uh, six little copper pieces in it. I wonder if he was gonna give each one of those copper pieces to all six of his kids. Maybe. Yeah. Guess not. They're... Dinner's gonna be cold tonight. So there's nowhere else to go in this room aside from the corridor that led to it. So you can continue to walk down that corridor if you like. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. And the path continues and you come upon another room. As you approach the room, you don't really notice uh, any movement in there. Uh, you can approach uh, cautiously if you like, or you can do a perception check and peer around the corner, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'll do a perception check and peer around the corner. All right, uh, roll for perception. All right, 18. It appears there's not a lot in here. You can see a door at the uh, opposite end of the room. The door is closed, but you can hear some slight movement and activity Flo. behind it. Renair, why don't you why don't you go? Why don't you go uh, crack the door? Have a look. Uh, me? Mhm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you. He walks over to the door and then he's going to uh push it open the slightest crack and he does so. Let's see how stealthy he is with that. Okay. Pretty stealthy. He pushes the door open just a bit and you can all hear voices from in the other room. It sounds like two voices. I'm gonna go, who's, I'm gonna go over there and I wanna peek at what they look like and what they're speaking. Okay, you walk over to the door. Uh, why don't you roll for stealth as you peek in? All right, looks like I rolled a 10 plus four is 14. You peer through the door quietly and inside you can see um, what looks like um, sort of a, a troll type figure, a big a burly bearded fella just barricading a door across the room with uh, furniture. And next to him is a human bandit who appears to be bald and have eye tattoos all over his head. In fact, it looks like perhaps the bandit who ran away from the yawning portal. Nice. Let's fuck him up. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Stephanos, you still have those goblin ears, you monster? Yes, they're right here in my trust knapsack with the banana chips that I have. <laughs> well, Ooh, okay. I don't know if I needed the banana chips parts. That's a little weird that you're keeping the, the ears next to that. But okay, uh, I'm going to pull out my disguise kit and I'm going Excellent. to make myself into the goblin that we just killed. I'm going to paste those ears on my head and we're going to get the info this way. Fine. Here's, your, here's the goblin ears. <laughs> Steve, now that you have your uh, incredible disguise on, I think it's time for you. I mean, now's the time to go in and try to try to work your magic on these these folks. His accent, from my recollection, was just, uh, his voice sounded a lot like Shane Madey, this guy on YouTube. Is, that my, is my recollection correct there, and that's how the goblin sounded? Yes, it sounded very similar to this person you're talking about, yes. Well, I guess I'll go into this uh, little place here. I'm the goblin now, Goblin Shane Madey. Here we go. <laughs> How's it going, fellas? Just completed my rounds down there. The two fellas turn to you, uh, Krentz, is the uh, the tattooed man? He he looks at you and says, "Chusby, what's uh? <laughs> you don't look well." <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I just had a couple of too many burgers and beers down at the old uh, <laughs> the Dragon, and uh, you know how it is with them. Sometimes the food's not the best, but you can't really put a price on the conversation and friendship, you know. Why don't you roll for deception? Ooh, deception, I like that. Looks like a roll of 15. Well, uh, they are not batting an eye here. Krentz uh, seems concerned about you, um, despite the fact, you know, you look a little ill and worse for wear, but he says, uh, quick, uh, 
Um, me and Zemk are having some trouble over here. The uh, lavatory's overflowing. We're trying to stomp up this door. That's the problem. Uh, yeah, you open the lavatory door that uh, Zemk has been uh, trying to barricade, and in the middle of it is a pit with a bunch of gray goo. There are two dead goblins in it. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are they alive? They look, they look pretty dead. No, I tried to send them in to fix it, and they fell into the goo, and now they're dead. Yeah, uh, I'd like to not then try and do the same as them, seeing as how the fate that uh, befell them is not something that I wish upon myself, so maybe you want to uh, get someone else to do this? Perhaps a maintenance man or something like that? Well, Zem can do it, but as long as you hold his hand so he doesn't fall in. All right, I'll okay. hold you. Here we go. Okay. Oh, whoops, a daisy, you slipped. Oh, no. His body jerks and he reaches his, his sewage-covered hand out. Help, Chesby! Help, Chesby! Oh, I, I, I can't. I just washed my hands and uh, I don't want to get them dirty. He starts um, jerking wildly. Wait, what's that you're saying? Mom, blah, 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 blah. Get up. Krenz, please come quickly. What's going on in here? He fell in. Could you just take a look? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I get nervous around this. I, we've already lost a few people here. He said that he just had one last thing to say to you, and if you could just go in there and take a look, maybe you could help him. Are you <laughs> sure? Yeah, just he's right there. Just, 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 just. He was calling for you specifically. Uh, why don't you roll for persuasion? Looks like I rolled a 12 plus a 5 in persuasion, which is 17. Krentz, uh says, well, all right, uh, he's a very dear friend of mine, and I am a godfather to all his <laughs> children, so I'll, let oh, me go no. check. And Krentz walks into the lavatory room just in the threshold there and starts peering over the ledge, trying to see into the, the pit of gray goo where his good friend uh, Zemk was. I could, I could support you. I'll hold you by the back of the shirt. You ain't going nowhere. You know, these two things, just another pure steel, pure steel. You're a very little fellow. I don't know if uh, <laughs> I trust you to hold me, but I'm just gonna peer over there and see what happens. And then I grab him by the shoulders and push him over, but then hold him up just so that he is dangling over the edge as I'm holding him over. Here's what's gonna happen, bub. You're gonna tell me everything that I need to know, or you're gonna join your friend down there in the gray drink. Does that sound like a plan? Uh, why don't you roll strength, a uh, strength check? Uh, that's a 13. So yeah, yes, you're successfully holding him. Uh, the rest of the crew now, uh, Steve seems to have, have him in a tight spot, so you could probably run through the room and rejoin him. Okay, great. Hey, right, gang. Right, we're how's it going? Wait a minute. You remember us. Here. You're those rotten scoundrels from the Yawning Portal. Rotten, huh? Ah, ah, please don't, please. Where's Floon? You're talking about the pretty boy, huh? Yeah, the pretty boy, where'd he go? Boss has got him in the other room. I, they're interrogating him. I'm just a patsy, you know, I'm just, I'm, I, I just do what I've told around here. Who's your boss? Groomshar. All right, where's the other room? How do we get there? Well, it's just down the hallway. You're gonna lead us to this room. You're gonna walk in there and you're gonna get him comfortable. And we're gonna have my little friend Stephanos over here who's a crack shot with a crossbow. And if you make one slight little move to let him know anything is up, he's gonna blow your brains out. So, you're gonna walk us in the room, you're gonna get him comfortable, and when the time is right, we're gonna come in there, we're gonna take Floon, and maybe at the end of it, I'll let you live. How about that? All right, that, that, sounds, that sounds good. You like All living, right. not dying? Yeah. Does that sound good? I, I do like that. Uh, and Promise me you'll leave Chesby alone. Oh, uh... <laughs> Last I heard, he can't hear anymore. You know why? Because I'm wearing his ears. <gasps> oh, okay, I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good plan, huh? I'm gonna haul him up and throw him into Kezo's big arms. Can I just, like, grab his skull and just, like, lead him forward? Yeah, you can do that, yeah. All right. All right, Krentz, lead us to this room where your boss and our friend Floon is. It's, it's just down this hallway and around the corner. Is there anybody else in this room that we're going to? Or is it just the body of Flume? Groomshar's gonna be there, and I think Nihilur, the Mind Flayer. I say we just murder this dude in cold blood right now so he doesn't <laughs> join the fight against us later on. We need him to get them on uh... In a, in a comfortable setting. He goes in there, starts striking up a conversation. We could pick off at least one of those other two. Wait, or we could send him in, see if he could convince the other two to leave. 
then we can just go in and grab Floon and leave. Yeah, but what if those two come after us later? How about, Steve, we kill this man, take off his face, put it on your face, and you try to convince them using his oh, face no, no. To, to get Floon back. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. I like where your head's going. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, you got a better idea? You better start spinning out a better idea. Uh, uh, what if, what if, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, It might be face carving time. Yes, yes, yes. Let's murder his face. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it's so haunting coming from Steven's voice. Keza, make his death, uh, painless. Just kill him immediately. You know what, Stephanos? I think it's time you become a man here. <laughs> I think it's time that you actually, if you're playing, okay. you kill him. You know what? I will. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> eager, eager to accept the task. I'm so sorry for you and your family, and uh, and your children, your mother. No, 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 no. But no, no, this is no, something no. that we must do. Please, I, 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 I'll go in. I, I'll, I'll be real convincing. Um. Stephanos, promise me you'll never cut a man's face off. You're a good son. We love you, son. I can't do it, guys. I can't. I'm looking at him in the no. eyes and I'm thinking about his family. Stephanos is going to spend a bundle on therapy. All right. I'll just break his neck. All right. Yeah, I thought so. Do I need to roll to do that? Or? Yeah, just do a just do a strength check. I'm going to hug him while you kill him, so he at least feels some sort of Jesus semblance of, of love before he dies. <laughs> I rolled a three with plus two. <laughs> five. Oh my god! Right. <laughs> you, you go up and start trying to snap his neck, and he just keeps saying, "Ow, ah!" Oh, you're <laughs> fracturing He's making my a bunch of noise. <laughs> I'm still hugging him. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, uh, buddy, I'm sorry about this. Time to clock out. Here we go. Okay. And I take oh my, my rapier and I stab him right through the bottom of the head and turn his head into kind of like a like a pike. <laughs> yeah, you, you put your rapier under his head and it goes... <laughs> Blood starts pouring out of his mouth. Rainier, um turns to the corner and starts vomiting. Uh, and he's dead. Stephanos is hugging his legs as the blood pours down onto Stephanos' head. Um, that was terrible. Oh, crying. That was so funny. This is a, this is a very sad scene. It's okay. Oh, it's Stephanos, so stop hugging his legs and drag his body back into the other room. We gotta take his face off. After all, this is your plan. Remember that. We had a family. When my father was murdered, I, it was probably just like this. Oh, but it's okay. Pull it together, Stephanos. Rainier is leaning against the wall and not making eye contact with anyone. He's silently <laughs> weeping. Um, Rene, take Stephanos into the other room. <laughs> you guys go connect. Him. You guys go have a moment. Um, yeah, go have a moment with him. <laughs> okay, yes. Do some light journaling or something or whatever the hell you <laughs> need to do to calm down. Beat some bongo drums, we're, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, mutilate this corpse, so you guys go take a second. Rene takes uh, the young halfling in it and they walk to the other room, sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally I could think. All right, All right. now go, go to town, do what you gotta do. All right, let's carve this man's face like a pumpkin. <laughs> Here we go. Take the dagger, taking the face off. All right, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Could you take his right. body and throw it into the acid pit, please? Thank yep. you. Yep, here we go. <laughs> Great, okay. <laughs> could you take Stephanos and throw him into the acid pit too? Absolutely not. All right, worth it. <laughs> All right, let's go down the hallway and go to the room. All right, Stephanos has composed himself. He's good to go. I can see he's still heartbroken. <laughs> oh, but look, look at uh, look at Steve. He's, he looks like that guy now. It's as if he Whoa, never died. Steve. Yeah. Hey, look at me, Stephanos. I'm alive. You don't have to cry anymore. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to go home and see my family and read them a nice bedtime story. Does that make you feel better? Just it kidding, it's me, Steve. Oh. Remember, you did this. Renera <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, is just watching all of this unfold, and it uh, <laughs> looks like he's sort of questioning his life choices <laughs> and his decision to come down here with you. Uh, he says, are we st still going to rescue Floon? Yes, we are going to rescue Floon. That is the whole point oh, of us being here. Okay. 
And remember, you said you were gonna pay us quite well when we get you, Floon. Just reminding you. I don't think you really need the reminder after what you just saw, right? I'll pay you whatever you want if you just leave me alone for the rest of my life. Sounds good. Let's go down the hall. You walk down the hallway. Uh, I assume, Steve, you want to be in front because you're uh, in disguise as Krentz. Gonna walk in there and be a regular Phoenix Buchanan. Just doing some light stretching, you know, warming up the instrument. Oh, I... What does that mean? And I put my hand on the doorknob, and here we go. All right, you open the door, um, and uh, a large room appears before you. Threadbare curtains hang on the east wall of a long hall, in the middle of which a muscular half-orc in dingy robes stands with his foot on the chest of a male human with wavy red-blonde hair. Fire burns around the orc's clenched fist, and his victim cries and squirms helplessly beneath him. Seated on a raised platform to the south is a nightmarish figure wearing black robes. It has large white eyes and rubbery purple skin with four tentacles encircling its inhuman mouth. It cradles and gently caresses what looks like a disembodied brain with feet. All parties turn to look at you. Will they ah. believe that you are Krentz? I guess we'll find out next week. <sighs> I forgot what Quint, what does Krentz's voice even sound like? I don't know, but I hope you can remember. <laughs> it kind of, it kind of sounded like a high-pitched chain, <laughs> still. <laughs> oh, wow, that went dark. I am emotionally exhausted. That was very dark. Well, I think that's a good place to cap it for now. We'll find out next week what happens with our big showdown, and hopefully there will be less uh, sadistic uh, mutilation. Fingers crossed. Can't See make any then. promises. Nickels yeah. and pickles. Awful. <laughs> Awful.